The date was July 6th, 1415. Pre-Reformation, the most powerful preacher of the Bible of his age, John Huss, had been condemned to death. Everybody knew about his preaching, at least in Prague and the surroundings, because he preached in Bethlehem Chapel, one of the great churches, if not the greatest, largest auditorium in that part of the world. And he preached the Bible. He wanted to make the Bible clear to the people. They condemned him to death for doing that. Why? Three things. One, he said that every believer is a part of the church. Two, he said the Bible is the sole authority, but mostly they condemned him for saying Jesus Christ is the head of his church. The truth that Christ is Lord of his church may sound somewhat benign to a casual listener in our generation, but the struggle for that truth has come to us through the ages on a sea of blood, as the life and death of John Huss so vividly illustrates. In his famous book on the church called De Ecclesia, Huss wrote simply, the Pope is not the head, nor are the cardinals the whole body of the church, for Christ alone is the head of the church. He explained that where the word of the Pope came into conflict with the word of Christ, believers were bound to submit to the scriptures and obey the Lord, for only he is the true king and ruler. Huss's candor cost him his life, but the flames lit on the day he died would pale in comparison to the fires of reformation that he sparked. A hundred years later, Huss's writings were discovered by a monk named Martin Luther. Emboldened by what he read and compelled by his study of the Bible, the German reformer took up the fight for Christ's honor as true head of the church. As Luther himself explained, the chief cause that I fell out with the Pope was this. The Pope boasted that he was the head of the church. But as Luther and the other reformers examined the New Testament, they became unshakably convinced that Jesus Christ alone is the Lord of the church. Three centuries later, the British preacher Charles Spurgeon summed up that Reformation conviction with these words. The Church of God, in a very special manner, calls Jesus our Lord, for there is not and there cannot be any head of the church except the Lord Jesus Christ. It is awful blasphemy for any man on earth to call himself Christ's vicar and the head of the church. And it is a usurpation of the crown rights of King Jesus for any king or queen to be called the head of the church for the true church of Jesus Christ can have no head but Jesus Christ himself. Like Charles Spurgeon, true believers throughout history have always been characterized by a wholehearted devotion to the church's true head, the Lord Jesus Christ. John Huss and the reformers who came after him understood this, which is why they broke away from the corrupt Roman Catholic system. The result in church history is what we call the Protestant Reformation. All of this flows from the fact that Christ alone is the head of his church. Certainly across the evangelical world, everybody gives lip service to Christ as the head of his church. Uh, we affirm the authority of his word. At least we say that. The real tragedy is that in practice, that just doesn't happen. If Christ is the head of his church, then his church should gather to hear him speak. He should be the sole authority in his church, and he speaks through his word. The church should be marked and noted by expository preaching, bringing the word of Christ to the people, by submission to his word, by worship of him he should be the focus of our attention the focus of our worship and the authority by which we learn what it is that god wants us to do it is that complete consummate devotion to the headship of christ over his church that cost john huss his life in 1415. the church the authority of christ and his headship 
is going to be the theme of the Resolved Conference this year.